better wake up. The world you live in is just a sugar-coated topic. There is another world beneath it. The real world. All right, so uh, Blade is a, a vampire superhero film directed by Stephen Norrington and written by David S. Goyer, loosely based on the Marvel Comics character of the same name. And with me this week is going to be Mike Racine. Hello. Well, <laughs> welcome to the podcast. Thanks for having me. Yeah, thanks for having me in your place. Um, first off, what did you <laughs> what did you think of this movie? <laughs> it was it was it was, it was fun. good. It was fun. it was dumb. It was dumb and fun. Yeah, dumb and fun. Uh, I liked uh, I liked some of the CGI. It felt like it dated it a little bit. Yeah, I was thinking about that. Like, uh, cause this is like kind of early CGI. Yeah. So, but what what other CGI movies were out at this time that that were uh, they were like equally bad or or they were good? Like, what was the best CGI Ooh. from this era? Because Lord of the Rings was two two thousand one, two thousand one, and they did it pretty good. Yeah, I remember thinking when I saw it, I was like, "This is good. This this is we've hit it. Yeah, <laughs> at the top. That's a Balrog. Um, I don't know. I think uh, I think the Matrix came out the next year. Uh, and that pushed the envelope a little bit, but at the, at the same time, there's still some corny stuff in the Matrix, you know. Yeah. But um, you remember earlier I was telling you the the production company that made all the CGI for this was called Flat Earth Productions. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I love that. And that those those guys were ahead of their time, I guess, because <laughs> now it's a thing. But yeah, they were the only. Yeah, yeah, they, they were uh, they were on the. The heat early. It's know? so funny because you can you can name a company anything you want. Yeah, no, yeah. they don't stop you. Cucks Incorporated. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cuck Enterprises. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's been taken by a thirteen-year-old boy. Yeah, I'm sure it has. Yeah. Um, you know, trying to LLC his lemonade stand. I, I made my PlayStation name uh, Roy Moore eighty seven. They let <laughs> they let me do it. Um. Yeah, you know, that's a tough life for those kids named Roy Moore. That's a common name, too. Is it? it yeah. Moore? Yeah. yeah. Definitely. But no one's naming their kid Roy anymore. Not many. Yeah. It'll come back around, though. That's all All the names do. Yeah. You know, there's kids now named Abigail, Dexter. Yeah, my aunt and uncle named their kid 9-11 before 9-11 <laughs> happened. <laughs> <laughs> now his name is yeah. 9-11 Johnson. It's very hard for him to find a yeah. job. Sure. Anywhere, yeah. Yeah, they're like, is this a typo on your yeah. resume? <laughs> it's like, never forget who I am. Yeah. Um. So, uh, yeah, this movie, um, pretty great. Wesley Snipes, obviously, you know, a staple of, uh, you know, our kid action movie diet. Yeah, well, we talked about this on my show, the Sit Down Podcast. Well, mm -hmm. our, our show. Right. Thank you. Yes, you're a... <laughs> 27 percent owner in in our oh man in that show yeah throw the listeners uh, off the scent of the real number you told me uh <laughs> but um like i don't i don't like the like i prefer like a flawed hero right i don't like the hero who's like never uh vulnerable or like always does the right thing and always yeah. shows, and it doesn't seem like blade ever like messes up and then he, he's like an asshole to the people that he saves <laughs> which is annoying yeah He'll be like, "All right, I save your life. Now get the fuck out of my, get the fuck out of my warehouse." Yeah, that's the that's and the, the other guy. <laughs> vampire talking. Oh, it's the vampire in him. Maybe. Who's the, the other guy? His uh, pro, uh, his mentor. Yeah, yeah, he's an asshole too. <laughs> Remember when he's like, "I'm gonna inject you with this serum. It's garlic." <laughs> It's like so stupid. It sounds like, like, like you're supposed to. I don't know. Big, big ding dang stereotype, you know. Yeah, but Stephen Dorff was good in this too. I don't know why we don't see more of him. Yeah, the the main bad guy. Yeah, Frost. Yeah, Deacon Frost. <laughs> yeah. Um, you say he's he, like not a real vampire. <laughs> he's like not accepted. <laughs> right. He's got a lot to prove. Yeah. And I guess he was like 24 when this came out. Yeah, he looked young. Yeah. Um, you know, when he turns like full vampire at the end and he gets those red eyes, that was yeah. kind of cool and he looks a little bit older but otherwise yeah young looking guy you said you don't like a flawed hero like blade doesn't even i do like a, i want a flawed hero right yeah. i meant yeah, yeah i yeah. mixed that up but uh, uh you know when the blade gets kicked in the face his glasses don't even break yeah <laughs> it's like uh <laughs> infallible there were also too many scenes where like it's just him against like f it's him with a machine gun against like six guys with machine guns and he <laughs> just goes <laughs> and like sprays them all yeah and uh yeah 
I was just playing The Last of Us on PlayStation Four, and it, that would never you could oh, ne- right. you, you'd be dead. Yeah, you've got like that game's like five bullets is a lot of bullets. Yeah, I love it. Yeah, yeah. Especially like because you can like sprint with the two by four, and you can one shot the zombies, and it breaks the board. But then your melee weapons run out. That's kind of weird. Yeah. Anyway. That's kind of like they're trying to be like, this is real life coming up. Yeah, yeah. But, yeah. <laughs> you know, it's still pretty wacky shit. Yeah. Let's see. Did you uh, Did you have any, like, favorite scenes or, like... I don't know. I, I th- there, there was so much of it that kind of took me out of it that I wasn't... Uh, <laughs> okay. Yeah. I just... Uh, so, you know, like, I'll usually disengage pretty quickly if there's something I don't like about a movie. And so this, I was kind of like... <laughs> I got up. I made coffee. I uh, and it was just on the background. I mean, it's a good movie to watch and like talk over and riff. You yeah, know? yeah. It seems like it's like a uh, the proper bad movie for like um. Riff we should have tra- did Mulan. Mulan. Yeah, but I've yeah. seen that too many times. I'll I'll have you back on for Mulan if you don't mind. All right. It's it'd be nice to get like uh you know a uh, a rougher guy around the edges for Mulan. Thank you. As opposed to uh, you know just. Like uh, these church children, you know? Right. right. Well, I, cause, uh, <laughs> I was on Facebook once and this girl wrote the status. She was like, if you ask a guy who, who his favorite Disney princesses are and he doesn't say Mulan, dump him. I'm like, oh my well, what, what world do we live in? Why'd, you, why'd your girlfriend leave you? Because I didn't like a thing that's for children. Because <laughs> I never saw the, the, the Chinese warrior movie. It's like, uh, I said Jasmine. It turns out uh, she hates Arabs. Yeah. <laughs> well, Jasmine's too much of a, a sex object. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> She's too hot. Yeah. Mulan's the blue Jasmine collar. Jasmine made me rock hard. <laughs> Mulan, <laughs> Mulan didn't do it for me. Yeah. All, that, all that man stuff turned me off. Yeah, I don't like a woman that works. I'd like to provide. <laughs> I want to be the provider. Yeah, right. Yeah, the way God intended it. Right. Mulan, yeah. you know, it's got its downfall. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Fucking uh, back to Blade though. <laughs> I fucking I I I, I it's these types of movies I kind of love um yeah. for just the the sole purpose of like you know like the very end um where he like you know like darts all the serum darts into the, uh, Deacon Frost yeah and then he <laughs> he's got like this great cheesy line and um. He throws the bottle up in the air and then like Karate kicks it into his face. Yeah. I was like, that's, that's like, this movie knows what it is. Well, in the opening scene, he basically goes in and like Columbines that vampire party. He's trying to enjoy <laughs> yeah. himself and he walks in with like a shotgun. Yeah. There's like, there's like 400 people there. <laughs> Does he, he I just goes nuts and kills everybody. Yeah. Uh, I'm giving you a serum. It's, it's garlic. <laughs> uh, they don't talk about holy water as much. No, they don't. Because they're like, forget everything you see in the movies about vampires. Crosses <laughs> don't do shit. Just garlic. But just gar- but garlic does. <laughs> they got some of it. Right. Garlic mace, yeah. yeah. Garlic lozenges. <laughs> Here's a garlic knife. Here's a garlic. Uh, and that's just so he can develop a resistance, right? Yeah. That's- <laughs> He's like, what is this bitch doing? And he's just always angry. <laughs> yeah. Um. You do. What do you think? Well, of his... he's like an asshole too. I I didn't like his character. I didn't like Chris Christopherson's character because there's, he's just kind of a prick. Well, I mean, like you said, you like the flawed hero. Maybe that's their flaw. They're just pricks. Yeah, but it's not. It's it's too um. It's like too arrogant. It's like too much. Like uh, have some be humble. We're cool. We're cool. We're the vampire hunters, and all the people are are just uh dumb and we, you know. Yeah, yeah. They don't. They don't know. Yeah. Like even when he saves that girl, Stephen Dorff captures a little girl and he throws her into a a uh, he throws her in front of a bus. <laughs> Which is so funny because yeah, if you haven't seen Blade, that's like the best visual. <laughs> well, most of the He's time like, in movies, one of the good guys. <laughs> usually in movies, they don't like hurt kids, right? Like, like that's yeah, seems to be kind of like a rule. Yeah. Also, I love that he always finds a way to like punch a woman, and <laughs> <laughs> it's like I, I feel like yeah. the guy who wrote this movie. I don't know, because like yeah. a lot of the times. <laughs> I, I don't know. It would be great if uh, one of uh, if some somebody listening could just make a supercut of Wesley Snipes movies punching women in the face. Wait, does that happen in his other movies? <laughs> oh, too? I thought that I thought so. That's what you were saying. It's like Wesley. Oh no, Snipes. in this movie in particular, it's always like, oh, I, I got to punch. I had to. I had to do it. 
<laughs> I had to hit this bitch in the face, <laughs> you know. And I think I, I don't know. To me, that seems like because I always like getting like an insight on the writer's mind. Right. And that always that almost seems like uh, yeah. You know, I don't like women. I want to hit them. <laughs> but no, I had to. Right, right. He just he, They just wanted to have a scene where you could punch a woman. Yeah. Uh, for whatever the reason. <laughs> yeah. And then anyway, like... I'm so woke now. <laughs> Go. Deborah's watching this show. It's uh, it's about like, I forget the name of it, but I think it's called 1963. 1963. Okay. Yeah. So it's, it's, it's about James Franco. He has to go back and stop the Kennedy assassination. <laughs> okay. So she was telling me about the show and I was like, yeah, it would be a better show if it was Martin Luther King, though, don't you think? <laughs> and then I just patted myself on the back for like <laughs> twenty minutes, twenty straight minutes. I was like, Phew. like, well, who who oh, else gonna go God. repeat this too real fast? Oh, I'm so fucking woke, and I came on myself. Oh, <laughs> uh, the best. I am come. so progressive and woke. Uh. <laughs> uh. Well, I mean, yeah. like that's that's the that's kind of the treasure of watching these older films. It's like they didn't give a fuck about transes and um, you know gays and even a lot of yeah. But all the better movies from that time, you know, they I don't know. They're a little bit more woke, yeah, yeah. Um, and like you said too, like, like American History X, my, <laughs> the best movie, the be all end all on yeah. racism. He yeah. learns an important lesson at the end. The journey is just. The icing on the cake. <laughs> I can't. I don't. I don't know. I'm almost afraid to watch that movie now because I liked it so much when I was in high school. Um, I, I was like, "This is the best movie," but but <laughs> I felt that way about Crash when I saw that too. The first oh time. Oh my god, Crash is terrible. Yeah, I haven't seen American History X. Yeah, and it was. I think it was just because I was too much of a good boy growing up. You know, so I feel. Yeah, we should watch it. He gets raped in the shower. Spoiler alert. Oh boy! Yeah. <laughs> now I don't want to watch it. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. It's, there's a lot of. I think there's a lot of uh, cr- uh, people criticize that movie quite a bit. Yeah, which they now rightfully I'm should. Take you in my now I'm gonna take you in my car and be and be an asshole to you. <laughs> yeah, he doesn't talk to I, her. Yeah, no radio on. It's just fucking. This is like what a nerd, New York. This is what a dork thinks a cool guy does. This the, that's <laughs> this is what I, how I feel about this whole movie. You know, yeah. It's like you you sit in your you brood and you have your car and you don't talk to anybody. <laughs> <laughs> it, like it, it makes me feel like like Wesley Snipes because he produced this, right? Yeah. So Wesley Snipes must be just a huge dork, <laughs> right? He's That's just giving he's just giving them what he thinks they want because this was uh okay so like we we're gonna talk about this like um this was one of the first successful produced Marvel movies yeah in fact I think it might even be the first ever mm-hmm. but um you know this movie made um 130 million dollars worldwide and a budget of 45 million. That's so good. that's good, right? Yeah, yeah. As long as it makes its money back, even if it breaks even, that's good for the studios because it's like free advertising for um, oh, who okay. produced this movie. It's okay. New Line Cinema. Okay. Um, but yeah, I I think it's it's, it's cool. It's like uh, why haven't we seen more Stephen Dorff in the past? Uh, Here, let me couple. look up some of the stuff he's been in because maybe he just kind of let's see. Here, do you want stuff that he's done recently or around the same time? I guess around the same time. But he's in True Detective season three, I heard. Oh, okay. Yeah. There's a lot of good actors out there that just like find the wrong yeah. you know, place to occupy. Um, let's see here. The only ones I really recognize here are Deuces Wild from two thousand two. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Remember that one? Vaguely. Um everything else is kind of like sh- a it's like a uh like a West Side story type of movie, right? No, it's like I think 50s it's like, gangs. I think it's a action 2000 it's a crime drama film. Okay. Um and I think there's a little bit of poker <laughs> involved, I would hope. Okay. But uh he was in uh oh, here we go, World Trade Center. Okay. 2006, that classic Nick Cage movie. Okay. Um Yeah, pub- see like Public like Enemies are- in 2009 with Johnny Depp. Okay. But I mean, he hasn't done yeah, no starring roles. Yeah, all of these are kind of like B movies. You yeah, know? like what are what are Blade's flaws? Um, well, I was, I was saying, I'm I'm sure there's a reason, but he's always wearing sunglasses and fighting at night. Yeah, so that's oh, got to so be maybe a flaw. He can't go out in the day. 
He doesn't have any character flaws. He just seems like too, he's too like bulletproof. Yeah. Yeah. And like, even at the end when, uh, you know, Deacon Frost or whatever gets those special powers from, yeah. Okay. So they have like this like seance. He's got to steal all these people's powers and then he gets really powerful. Like he doesn't even have trouble with that. He's just like, oh, he's stronger than me. Uh, I better fucking get this serum out of the wall. And yeah, he never really struggles or, uh, yeah. (laughs) Yeah. I mean, yeah, I guess here and there. I don't know. It's good, though. I want to see a character, you know, overcome his whatever. Yeah, his racism? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. That's my favorite. When a guy... You like, know what the best movie you, is? Gran Torino. <laughs> <laughs> or or uh, maybe uh, he saves he saves the black woman from the crash. What what a character yeah. flaw this uh, racist oh. cop has overcome. <laughs> right, right. Oh, wow, he is good. <laughs> Which Dylan brother was that? Matt, Matt Dylan. Matt, yeah. Oh man, I always watch that movie. I'm like, what? What are? What do they want us to think and feel when we see this movie? I think. I mean, they want us to be like, oh wow, everybody is prejudiced, <laughs> which is such a suburban right. mom type of thing to say, right? You know. I I mean I know I felt they, like, like they want us to watch the movie like, oh, even black people are racist. <laughs> too. Wow, this movie really made me think. <laughs> I remember being like, oh, wait a second, police officers can be bad? I yeah. was really young. Oh, yeah? <laughs> I was like 20. You're my age. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Yeah. I guess that's not really young, but... Yeah, you're like, I never looked at it that way. <laughs> the cops are... And it's also like the way they talk to each other in that movie where the guy's like, hey, Osama, why don't you, why don't you fucking blow up more of our buildings? <laughs> yes. fucking... It's like nobody says that to a guy's, would say that to a guy's face. Right. You say it behind his back after he leaves the store. Yeah, or you can say it sarcastically as a joke. Get it yeah. out like that and then, right. you know, right. at least you're not going cold turkey. <laughs> like you would never like get into an argument with a black guy over a parking spot and quote crime statistics at him. <laughs> that just wouldn't ever happen. <laughs> <laughs> What an aggressive move that would be. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Now, this guy, they probably could have explored a little better. This is like the cop who, like, wants to be a vampire. So yeah. he's trying to, like, get in. He's he's like the open micer of... of he's uh, an open mic level of uh, vampirism. Vampires. Yeah. His eyebrows are ready. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I feel like that's the main thing about being, being a vampire is you have to start plucking your eyebrows. Sure. Is um, that how cops used to... Did they, did they have the light blue back then? Um, is this yeah. New York? Yeah, this is. De- I was gonna say, uh, did you recognize any New York? I mean, they're trying to go for like this, like slummy, you yeah. know, futuristic Blade world, but I mean, it's clearly just New York. Yeah, she sprayed him with the vampire with the garlic mace. <laughs> Look, he just shows up. <laughs> he just shows up and, Like does Blade ever get stuck in traffic yeah. Does he ever get the wrong address Right. Is, is his printer ever out of ink When he's printing map quest right. directions And he's never worried that he like Just got there in the nick of time Right. You know he's just like stoic You know piece of shit No expression Yeah 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 Yeah. He could have been hung over or high this entire movie Because he's literally wearing sunglasses, sunglasses The entire time <laughs> Yeah I know I guess that helps hide your stunt double, at least, you know, from a production standpoint. Right. You know, you just put them in the leather jacket, leather, <laughs> leather daddy. You're calling <laughs> Blade a leather daddy yeah. earlier. Uh, now, does he have vampire teeth? Yeah. Yeah, because he's a, uh, you know, half vampire. Yeah. yeah. I don't want to get too far into that uh, Marvel world because, like, I don't, I don't subscribe to that. You know, comic book shit. I like the movies; they're fun stories. But yeah. as, as far as like reading, I've I've tried to get into comics before, but every time it's like, um, you know, I just like I get the comic for free, or like somebody's like, "You'll love this," and mm-hmm. I I read three pages, and I'm like, "This is just too long. I can't invest really? this yeah. kind of time." Yeah, yeah. I read Watchmen; that was good, but I was never like a I was never like a comic book guy. Right. I mean, like I want to get into it, but yeah. I just couldn't. You know. Yeah. Um, I have a friend that even uh, illustrated comics. Oh, um, yeah. yeah, Invincible. He, uh, Corey Walker. He did like the first season or something, and it's just like, yeah, you'd love this comic book about Apache, uh, you know, mafia stuff, like mm-hmm. Indian mafia stuff. So, is there one? Yeah, we should do that on on our show. It's called Skelt. Okay, I think. 
It's so racist. I'll have to just double check it. Yeah, comic books don't really give a shit about racism, though. Yeah. You know? They they know who oh, they're no. fucking selling to. He got away. Yeah. Hey, did we How see does the- he carry all these guns? Did they make a video game? A Blade video game? Um, let me just look it up real fast. Have you seen the 9-11 um, buildings yet? No. I don't know why no, I just I, called them that. The World Trade Center. Did you, have you seen I've the had World Trade Center? For the three thousand men and women who lost their lives. I'm so, I'm so sorry. That's the Brooklyn in me coming <laughs> out. Did you ever hear JP's story about he was at an open mic and some guy went up and he was like, "Yeah, I was down at nine eleven. I was a first responder," and like nobody clapped or anything because they're not paying attention. <laughs> and the guy's like, "You fucking millenniums are a bunch of cell phone computer <laughs> douchebags." <laughs> millenniums. Uh... That's a pretty Steve good Steve Buscemi was... Uh, I bet it was a terrible joke, though. <laughs> as, as no, he just as... he just wanted applause for being a first responder. Like, buddy, yeah. it was a long time ago. Oh, right, you can't right, Can't be right. resting on your laurels. Yeah. Yeah, I've I've got that, Um, you know, I say I'm in the Air Force, and then I'll, you know, if they don't respond, I could be like, oh, okay. Yeah. You're welcome. Yeah. I don't take it that far, because 9-11 responder, that guy's got cancer. He's got some serious... Anger. Did you did you ever fly any planes? No, my dad was a pilot, but okay. I um I was just a computer dork, you okay. know. I did the networking back when it was uh XP. We were switching from Vista to XP. Yeah. And uh I saw a funny comic strip one time. It was like yeah. this guy in the army and he's out in the field and he's getting rained on. He's like, "Oh, this sucks." And then like the marine guy or the, the guy in the marines is like in the desert and he's like, "Oh, it's 100 degrees out here. This sucks." And the Air Force guy, he's like, the cable's out. This sucks. <laughs> that's so true. And yeah. that's why all the other branches hate us. Really? Yeah. I mean, like, they don't hate us, hate us, because it's like all just at the end of the day, we're all on the same team. But, like, yeah. there's this inner branch rivalry stuff that where they, like, they call this chair force. Uh-huh. That's funny. <laughs> you know? Yeah. So, yeah, it's pretty ridiculous. Yeah, there was a PlayStation game back in the day. Do you want to hear some of that... Uh, I could pull up a video of it. Sure. I just want to talk about this scene right here because it's too like, and Will I don't know. This is me describe being this scene real fast because yeah, he's outside a club. He he found parking apparently. <laughs> this is New York, and he's found a great parking spot right in front of the building. Sure. Uh, he never seems to feed a meter or get a ticket <laughs> or get his car towed. He's always parking right there for his Camaro. Sure. Whatever kind of car that is. And then he walks up to the bouncer and he's like, the guy's like, do you have an invitation? He's like, yeah, he's my motherfucking invitation. <laughs> he just beats the shit out of him. Look, how dare you? <laughs> oh, he took his sunglasses off. Yeah. But this is, this is, th- this movie is like what a, I mean, I said this before, but this movie is what a dork thinks is cool. Yeah. And it is cool. <laughs> No, it's not, man. I'm I'm gonna show you what real cool is. Oh hell yeah, dude! Yeah. Um, I don't know. Cool isn't about like being just a complete asshole to other people. Oh man, he's a dick to this woman the whole time. Yeah, I and guess there's too much of him just like walking into a place and like fighting everybody in there single handedly. Right. See. Yeah. How did he, when how did he get trained? Maybe there should be a Blade origin story. I don't even care. Well, I mean, if they want to just kick the bartender in the face, you know, some guy who's working. <laughs> this this movie was written by like a punk. <laughs> this movie was written by a guy who probably grew up in Hollywood and like <laughs> wanted to be cool so bad. <laughs> Um, and I'm not even saying that I'm that cool. I'm just I'm cooler than whoever wrote this. Fucking do you want to see a picture of the dork that wrote it? No. David S. Goyer. Oh yeah, he looks like a dork. Oh controversy. Let's see what he did here. Oh boy, he's got some sexist theories on She-Hulk. Yeah. Yeah. I have a theory about She-Hulk, which was created by a man, right? And at the time, in particular, I think 95% of the comic book readers were men, and certainly almost all comic book writers were men. It was this classic male power fantasy, so like most people reading, blah, blah, blah. I think She-Hulk is the chick you could fuck if you were Hulk. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> wow. <laughs> Good stuff. Yeah. 
Man, that's the problem with the media is they'll quote you uh, even when you're drunk <laughs> and you're just right, right. talking shit in a bar. In this your, guy, in your hot tub, yeah. Yeah, this guy's probably not the worst, but that was a bad interview. Yeah, <laughs> he gave. I don't know. Bad writing kind of takes me out of a out of a movie. Mm, he, oh yeah, he did uh, Batman versus Superman. Oh, he did. Yep. <laughs> Let's see here. I um, guess that's the other thing too in Hollywood. These people just like you know they they get in because their dad, you know. They're just in, and then they just work forever. Right. Like, it's funny how, like, Max Landis, right, is this, like, sexual predator. But mm-hmm. he's too powerful because his dad his dad directed, what, like, Animal House or, like... Yeah, that is interesting how they're so protected like, by that tree of money. They're protected by a movie that peop- where people farted on each other, you know? <laughs> it's like, you can't... You can't accuse that guy. His dad, his dad directed <laughs> Diarrhea Party or like whatever, whatever you know the eighties right. comedy was. Yeah, where and they <laughs> where they break into a fucking female dorm and put cameras up. And it's like yeah, awesome. Yeah, and the people telling you that are the Jewish lawyers who are like, they're like, no, you don't have a case. That person has too Why much money. Why did you money. say Jewish lawyers? Is my is I feel like my racism is rubbing off on you. Yeah, maybe a little. I don't bit. want that to happen. <laughs> yeah. I'm already gone. <laughs> I'm already a vampire. <laughs> I was bitten as a child. Yeah, maybe I could I'm... straddle some hybrid blade line. <laughs> yeah, you know, but he know this guy wrote um, some good. Movie. He wrote Batman Begins. Okay, um, but a lot of this is just shit. Was Bat? Was that the Christian Bale? Yeah, that's the first Christian Bale one. Um, he did the story for Dark Knight. And then he did, oh, he did. Uh, the story for Dark Knight Rises, but he didn't write it. It says he does. Okay. He's done everything from direct to produce. Um, to, you know, just jerk off yeah, uh-huh. in front of women without their consent. Yeah. Well, that's an interesting thing is like, uh, oh, I did a riff last night about how like the the real victim of the Louis C.K. scandal is like guys that look like Louis C.K. Because they got to be confident for the past 10 years and now they're like, it's over. Yeah. <laughs> the party's over. Some yeah. girl's like, all right, you look like Louis C.K., I'll fuck you. <laughs> yeah, the black shirt is look is done for a little bit, huh? Yeah, well, no, he's not taking that. I'm, I'm, fa- I'm fat. <laughs> Fashion I never wear. goes out of style, baby. Yeah. Um, Donald Lug was good in this movie. He's he's a very just, consistent actor. You're I, just naming all these B-list support actors. Donald Logue, um He played the... Re- but he was in that show, Grounded for Life. Oh, yeah. That's a good show. I've never seen it, but I've heard really good things about it. Yeah, it's a good show. It's about a family from Staten Island. He's the uh, okay. So Logue is Quinn, the cocky minion leader of Frost. This guy's from Ireland. Does he have an accent in this movie? No. Yeah. yeah. Uh, no. Irish vampire. Is he fucking drinking blood all the time like an alcoholic? Yeah. The other thing I want to talk about is like it, it's very th- these movies are very like um, almost like genocidal. The way they talk about right, it, yeah. Know? You were saying that earlier. The opening sequence, Blade, the good guy. <laughs> yeah, it's like it's an, an entire room full of bad <laughs> vampires, and I'm gonna kill them all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And uh, there's a there's a series of books called uh, the Redwall series. I, yeah. I read them as a kid, but they're like they're they, it's like um they're like medieval kind of stories, but the characters are like mice and ferrets and uh, rabbits and badgers. And, and so it's like, they're fun books, you know? But um, all the good people are like mice, squirrels, uh, uh, hares, badgers. Yeah. And then all the bad guys are like rats, foxes, ferrets, weasels, <laughs> stoats, which is a kind of weasel. So it's just funny that like, it's always set up that way. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, just like Bright earlier, you know. And I heard the author like hated foreigners or something. <laughs> apparently, <laughs> he's like he just gives you like what little clues in on like who's each race for him. He's like these people are the Jews. Yeah, yeah, yeah. These people are the right. black people. Right. Chinese. But I don't know. I just think that's bad. I think that's lazy storytelling. To be like, uh, we have to defeat the orcs or the vampires or the. You know, it's like isn't there? Isn't yeah, there, isn't there a vampire who's cool? I think. Or are they all just evil? I mean, and why are they evil? Right. Where do they come from? Right. Why are they here? I think why are when we it's fighting them? too on the nose, like that's when you're that's when you realize it's like a shitty writing. But like yeah. if they can trick you and make you forget yeah. that you're watching these themes, that's when it's good. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. I feel like 
because it's not like anybody's ever reinvented the wheel. There's like what like ten stories that have been told or whatever. Yeah, that whole you know, but like just it's all about variation. Well, there's ten stories, and then uh, number eleven is crash. <laughs> <laughs> right, they redid it. Yeah. Um. Okay. So, uh, did you? Uh, I wanted to talk a little bit about his his sword for a second. You know, like they try to make swords cool in this movie. Uh huh. Um. But they're not cool. Swords. I don't know. I disagree. <laughs> you disagree? Okay. Well, tell me why. Well, I, I don't. I'm kind of on the fence about. Uh, I'm on the fence about swords. Okay. Uh, when I was a kid, I really wanted a lightsaber, like very badly. Yeah. And they had like the lightsabers that were like glass and they lit up. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Those are cool. Yeah. But I just went to KB Toys and I bought a plastic one that kind of like yeah. comes out. It's uh-huh. got the interlocking, uh, you know, pieces yeah. of it. Yeah. I know what you're talking about. So that was cool, and then and then like like I thought and about since buying you become a, an adult. <laughs> well, I thought of buying a Lord of the Rings sword. Yeah, uh, but I I think they're cool. Yeah, I mean, there's something. If co- you had the money, if you had a lot of money, you and Shelby get a nice apartment. Uh-huh. You know, you buy some furniture, uh-huh. you go on vacation. Yeah. The logical next step is you start buying swords. <laughs> <laughs> and then do I have like a sword cabinet or do they go on the wall? You, buy, like, you start with one. Uh-huh. Well, I'm, I'm, I don't know. It's your. Get yourself a starter sword. Go your, on. It's your life. <laughs> it's your life. Yeah. Okay. Um, I can, well, I can would understand. You, would, you go, would you go katana or would you go medieval? Oh, um, well, I think I would have. To, I mean, first of all, I think swords are gay. But second of all, <laughs> why? I'm into them. How are they gay? <laughs> I mean, come on. If if an adult comes over to your house and you're like afraid to like keep it out, you're like if if my dad came over to my apartment and I had otherwise had like a nice apartment where it's yeah. like I had an income and everything, I'm still hiding that sword because okay. I'm, I don't want him to know I'm fucking frivolously spending my money yeah. on stupid shit. There was an article written recently about like, uh, it was like, I fucked sword guys. <laughs> it's like a girl <laughs> wrote it. It was pretty funny. Yeah. I yeah. mean, they're kind of the worst because the, they're willing to sacrifice. It seems like at least these people are willing to sacrifice like spending money on real food. They'd rather do like ramen noodles and then save yeah. up for the sword. I think I would rather be a sword guy than a gun guy. I don't, I don't, I have no respect for gun guys. Really? Yeah. Um, I mean, I kind of, I'm, I think I'm the opposite. I'm the opposite a little bit, but I will go ahead and say, I do, I do kind of like swords, but I, I know they're gay for sure. Yeah. Um, I just feel like unless you hunt, there's no, there's no reason to like carry around a gun. Yeah. I mean, concealed carry. It's just like for, it's for fake tough guys, I think. Because 90, there's never, I've, I've never even like, really been in a fight or anything and i think you can defuse 90 yeah. percent of stuff with yeah your- i i hope people aren't using their guns to defuse fights you yeah. know brandishing or otherwise but yeah yeah, yeah <laughs> but there's something cool about uh a gun safe you know where you yeah. have like enough rifles to protect your home from like a small i'm sure when a zombie militia. apocalypse comes i'm gonna have to apologize to every every <laughs> uncle that i have that owns guns well my br- my brother um i hope he doesn't mind me saying this he's got he's got quite the arsenal and um he goes hunting and stuff but it's it's just like a fun thing to go shooting sometimes in like an ar-15 uh, I'm sure. Yeah, he's got all sorts. No, of, it is fun. He even has like a Tommy gun clip, you uh-huh. know, where you can fire like a hundred rounds, yeah. and then like the barrel needs to like cool off okay. afterwards, you know. But uh, I went to a gun range in in Asheville, and I was like, you know, I shot a couple targets with a pistol, and I was like, yeah, this this is cool, but it's yeah. not that cool. Part of me wants to get away from the gun range and yeah. go to like the woods okay. and shoot at cans, you yeah. know. Um, I, I think they have some outdoor ranges and then they also have like, you know, like the quarry. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, they, I guess that's the culture right there shooting. too. You, you, you know, you hunt and you yeah. shoot stuff, right. which is fun. But I, but I feel like if you're carrying a gun around for self-defense. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not into that. Like, yeah. But back to, back to swords real fast. Yeah. Um, when we, when I was in high school, we took a trip to Spain Yeah. and, uh, they have tons of replica swords for like prices children could buy. Okay. So we all got swords uh, like 40 of us yeah and uh we had to take these swords back on the plane yeah. through customs yeah so if you could just imagine did you check your bag or did you, they 
Well, I mean, like, okay, if you could just imagine each kid having, yeah. like, a small knife or like, what sword. What do you bring it back from Spain? Or letter <laughs> opener. Yeah. Or crossbow. Ten swords. <laughs> Everybody had these swords. Uh-huh. So our plan was to stick them all into one bag and let them know okay. up front. Yeah. <laughs> and it would just be, like, a, a math Did teacher. Did you write your names on them? Yeah, well, yeah, what we did is we took photos of each one okay. of whose it was, and then, like, our calculus teacher held on to it. Yeah. And then we went and got it at her house yeah. after the trip was over. Yeah. So she went through uh, international custom post 9-11. It yeah. was 2003. Yeah. With a fucking suitcase full of knives, uh-huh. which was the funniest visual to see <laughs> on the bag scanner. <laughs> wow. It was just a bag, bag full of like knives and swords and stuff. Wow. Which is awesome. Yeah. Anyway. Nice. It was fun. I always think, like, you know, because men are so violent. <laughs> right. But we've also, like, right. had the power forever. I don't know. I'm a kind so, of a beta, but I'll go, I'll go Yeah, with I'm you. a beta, too. I'll go with you down this. I act like an alpha, but I'm a beta. I think you could be an alpha. If I really wanted to? Yeah. If I put the time in. Yeah. If some, not even if you put the time in. If somebody just said the right thing to you. Uh-huh. Or actually the wrong thing. To right. That, for that. <laughs> right. You seem like a guy that can fly off the handle here and there. Yeah, yeah, here and there. Well, let me show you my door. <laughs> I don't. I I've been punching stuff. I mean, here and there. <laughs> okay. And I hit a. I punched a hole in that door, but I also punched Deb's windshield the other night because I couldn't find a, a ramen restaurant. And I was mad, <laughs> and it cracked. So I'm wondering if like maybe I'm a superhero. Oh my god, Mike, you need to come up with a new anger tool. Well, it's only a couple. It's only been a couple times. I know, but. Okay. No, but I'm saying I'm I'm punching <laughs> stuff, no, not thinking I'm going to break anything. Like, right. This wall is pretty solid. <laughs> but it, that didn't really hurt. It's but such I'm an Italian thing to know exactly how strong your wall, your house is. Well, this one's not that strong. And then, and <laughs> Based then, on hitting walls? Well, and then this is from maybe like a year ago. <laughs> <laughs> oh, for those of you listening, Mike just pulled a mirror off the wall and there's a hole in the drywall. <laughs> <laughs> that's about the size yeah. of this. Tell him why, Deborah. Strong fist. Because I scared him. No. Oh, because I threw a basketball at him and he didn't catch it. Yeah. And it hit him in the penis. Oh, yeah. If I you hit get hit in the, the dick, there yeah. it is. <laughs> that's how you be an alpha, Mike. You just keep getting hit in the dick. No, I'm like a superhero, but you have to punch me in the dick <laughs> to activate my powers. <laughs> oh my god you like <laughs> i need you to punch me in the dick there's no time oh yeah. man and then like at the very end like there's no one around to punch you in the dick so you have to like overcome your fear of punching yourself mm-hmm. in the dick yeah <laughs> i'm thinking of that that Chappelle bit where he's talking about cosby and he's like he rapes but he saves yeah oh my god that's such a good bit yeah um good stuff um wow so this is a sturdy house have you ever thought about getting like a heavy bag or maybe like... Where would I put it though? Punching there's, gloves? There's no space in here. What if? What about, you know, like those like kick shields? I had a punching bag when I was a kid, but you never like, you never use it. You never make right. plans to use it. Well, I think maybe just a kick shield on the wall. So you know you have a punch space. I, I get that it's a I little... I don't do it that much. Right. But once you have kids, you're not allowed to punch the, the glass of your car because those kids are learning that shit. Yeah, but that's what what I picked up from my father. So I gotta I gotta keep the torch, <laughs> not break the cycle. I gotta carry yeah. on its torch. Yeah, that's I think I think the biggest epidemic in this world is like fake tough guys. Right, they, they do the most damage. You know. Yeah, unlike real tough guys right. like me. Yeah, and no, fake but, woke people doing the real damage. Fake tough guys, fake woke people. Yeah, just don't be fake. Be who you are. Well, fake woke people is interesting because it's always like. People will get up, you know, like comics get on stage and be like, yeah, fuck Whitey, right? You know, yeah. Whitey's the devil. Yeah, wait for but applause break. It's like, yeah, we are the devil, but you are still uh-huh. acting out of self-interest by saying that. You're still trying to, you know, right. build yourself up yeah. by attacking my proud people. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and then you have that whole level of like, that's that's a pretty unoriginal thing to say. As far as a joke goes. Yeah. So if you're trying to make a point, it better be fucking really good. Yeah. So. Yeah, I don't, you know. I th- th- What's offensive is the, and here's, he's, he's fighting another girl. Yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, but she knows kung fu, so it's an even fight, and you're allowed to punch her in the face. Right. There's another movie like that where... Uh, <laughs> What's the the punch in the women in the face? Yeah, punch. Yeah, they're like they're like they punch a woman. Like I had to do it, <laughs> had to do it. We can break the rules. You ever see a movie called The Raid? Oh yeah, that's a great action movie. Dude, I, I I I so I haven't seen part two, but uh, I saw the first one, and it's funny how like the rules are just different, you know? Yeah, like it's Indonesian, I guess. Um. I mean, I'm not sure, but that's one. Uh, that's a movie that I'll watch with subtitles, no problem. Yeah, it's good. Yeah, yeah. Well, American movies, it's all like it's a lot of like drop your weapon, and then this, it's like they'll just flip a guy over and shoot him in the fucking head. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> three times. Well, they know what movies are for. You know, they're not trying to like play yeah. by the rules in the movies. This is just uh, it's pure entertainment, and as long as it doesn't yeah, try to make rules a woke you... point at the end, you know. Yeah, there are some rules you do have to play by, though. Yeah, no killing children. He um, throws that little girl into a like into a a booth or something. <laughs> like, like, like that looks like it fucking hurt. Yeah, the way you you did the motion of throwing the girl too, you did it like a frisbee. <laughs> no, but that's how he did it, right? He's like, Ugh. um. Then she lands on the street, and a a bus is behind her, and yeah, blade saves her. Yeah, I mean, I I I overall like this movie. It was uh, I didn't like it. Really? Even from like it wasn't uh, sexy enough. <laughs> <laughs> okay. No. I, yeah, I just I I didn't. Uh, I it's didn't I like mean it. for what it is, it's it's a good movie. You're not nobody's going in, you know, thinking it's Citizen Kane or nothing. I just thought it was like a waste of time. Right. This entire better movies out there. Yeah. Yeah. What's a good? What's a better movie for this from genre? This, from the, oh yeah, from this genre. This yeah, era. either vampire or just like kung fu, because I would say that's what this movie is. It's like a kung fu vampire. Yeah, movie. Well, Guardians of the Galaxy is was good, but that had some humor in it. And, yeah, you know, and that was like and this got a solid story. Yeah, yeah, and, and themes, then, tons of themes. Yeah, like I like um I like Iron Man because he's funny. Uh-huh. I I don't really like Thor that yeah, much. I think he's kind of boring. I think the Hulk is kind of boring. His hair is too long. <laughs> yeah. Did you see the new Thor? He's got a nice haircut. No. Yeah. I, but people are saying good things about it. Yeah, it got a really good score on Rotten Tomatoes. That's what makes me think, like, maybe I do like Thor. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, uh, all these years I thought I wasn't gay. Like, maybe I am gay. Yeah. Yeah, who knows? Anyway. <laughs> uh, so, now this is like, this is a scene here, too, where the guy, there's like nine... There's nine guys, and then the Chris Christopherson comes in and just kills all of them with a machine. He just mows them all down. Yeah. So that stuff like that like bothers me, where it's like there's no the, there's no strategy in the uh, in the fight scenes. Right. Yeah. And and then like the payoff, you know, he could he could take out like a hundred people. Yeah. You know, and then there's just this weird little twist at the end where you're like, what the fuck was? They didn't build towards that at right. all. Right. Um, but this was a good year for movies because a lot of good stuff came out. You like Saving Private Ryan, right? And, and I forget what else, but it was a good yeah. year. I remember. Yeah, Big Lebowski. You okay. know, other other stuff like um, uh, Notting Hill is Shelby's favorite movie from that year. Okay, so like it's got something for everybody. But then sh- the the Oscar winner was uh, Shakespeare in Love. Yeah, I'm thinking I'm gonna shit all over that because last year yeah. Titanic. But the Academy so up its own ass. Yeah, they are. They really are. I mean, last last year Titanic. I mean, I understand it. Yeah. It was like a grand spectacle. I wouldn't have chosen that myself. Yeah. But um, you know, coming up, these, what else came out in '97? These next five years are gonna be fucking trash for for the Best Picture. You know, are they? Um, oh, the next in the '90s. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You think you'll be doing this podcast in five years? I mean, I hope so. I want to make it to 2001 for Lord of the Rings because it's my favorite movie. Okay. The but, first one? Yeah, Fellowship. Okay. Yeah. Return of the King is the one that smashed all the uh, um, award stuff and tied like Ben-Hur and Titanic in terms of nominations. And, okay. You know, they got, they got like 11 best uh, or 11 awards or something like that. Yeah. Fellowship is good because it, uh, it has Bovermere in it. I like that guy. Oh, yeah. Sean. He's a good character. Sean Penn? Yeah. He's good. He dies in every movie. He just he they does, joke yeah. about it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, there's like a montage on YouTube yeah. right of his his deaths. That's his forte, I'd yeah. say. So people are good at certain things. Yeah. Um 
so I guess uh I guess we could start wrapping down here on this, but um I wrapping wanted to read down. wrapping up. Who says wrapping down? I uh, mean wind I guess I was mixing winding down and wrapping oh, up. Okay. How do you do that back? Anyway. Um I wanted to read a, a, a review um from Amazon real fast. Um you know, just to see if yeah you uh because like sometimes I feel like a good like level headed no bullshit it'll like sell you on a movie does yeah. that make sense uh-huh. um so um i'll do some reading here and you can chime in whenever you want all right so uh blade has been is a guilty a, pleasure just, uh, just a, uh this isn't a critic it's like a regular it's person. just a regular guy i mean like he's a fucking psychopath it, film rating three out of five stars uh video rating four out of five stars Audio rating five out of five stars. Audio. Extras wow. two out of five stars. He's rating the DVD. Okay. Um, and then overall oh, okay, score okay. four okay. out of five stars. Yeah, yeah. You know, so he cl- he clearly likes Blade, and he's like <laughs> critical of it, like it's like a set of his. You know, like oh, I missed a few tags there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but um, okay. So Blade has been a guilty pleasure of mine um uh, for a long time. It's not a high art. It wasn't. It hasn't aged well. It stars Wesley Snipes, who who ranks just above Steven. Steven Seagal on the I actually own movies starring this guy embarrassment meter, you know, right. but nevertheless, I'm a fan of the comic book Steven films. Seagal just came out with a book, I think. <laughs> really? Yeah. You know that shit wasn't written by him. He's just, he, like his CTE head. That's, he's just like, oh, I was on a train and, yeah. and then I fucking snapped this dude's neck. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a guy when he talks, you're like, how are you real? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> What if he just like? What if it was like a self help book, but it was just all about like snapping life snack, you yeah. know, grabbing life by the neck and snapping. <laughs> I don't know. Do you know what the book is about? If I have a son, I'm going to show him Steven Seagal movies and be like, "Son, that's a man." <laughs> Before he gets fat, or just like throughout, uh, we'll do we'll do like a montage, but we'll go back and forth. Yeah, yeah. We'll do fat Steven Seagal, then we'll watch. Skinny Stevens. That's great. Yeah. You really life building life lessons. <laughs> yeah. Um yeah, so he's a fan of the comic book films, vampires, rated R action flicks, and uh Blade delivers the goods and is a lot more fun than it deserves to be. I think that's I think that's so accurate. Yeah. You know, it's a good movie and it's a lot more than it deserves to be. And having read that, it makes me it makes it easier for me to watch the film. Uh huh. So anyway. I don't want to go over everything because he goes on for another five paragraphs here. Okay. <laughs> as you could imagine, a dork would like that. Yeah. But um, otherwise, you know, um, some some tidbits about the film is they had to change the ending and stuff because it didn't screen well. Okay. Like uh, they had to significantly change the ending because- What like, happened at the end? I guess he just turns into bats and flies away or something when he gets cut in half. The bad guy? Yeah. Yeah. Oh. And it's in it's in the special features for the for the blade, you know. Okay. I guess people weren't happy with it. That's weird to me that you can make an entire film and then audience members will just be like, change it. Yeah. <laughs> so they they fill out those little comment cards and they change it. Yeah. Yeah. Would you ever do that for a bit? They're not. I don't right. know, but you hear so many stories about like movies that like, oh, it didn't test well with the focus groups, but then they cha- they kept it. Right. Who who is in a focus group? It's just some slob, right? Uh, I think it's just people Some slob from Minnesota. No, 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 no. The, it's the, LA the slob state. <laughs> they're they're definitely coastal elites. Yeah. Um, you know who what bugs me? Because it's time. so it's so cold in New York. People keep going. Uh, oh, this is this is nothing compared to Minnesota. Yeah, fuck those where, people. You have a your driveway is ten feet from your door. Right. You don't have to walk half a mile to a subway station. Yeah, but the I mean, there's also negatives like. I feel bad about this, but when I was a kid, we had a super long driveway. Yeah. And I was like 16, and my dad was, if I was 16, minus 16 from 73. So he was like, he was in his mid 50s. Okay. And I was letting him snow blow and shovel the entire driveway by himself. Why? And I'm, I mean, like, I was just a shitty kid. Yeah. And my brother, you know, he's, uh, he's like 10 years older than I am. Yeah. So he was like, he saw what was wrong. Yeah. Um, I think we were all like that though. Like your right. parents would, like shovel the driveway. And, like, right. Are you gonna pay me for this? Right. This exactly. Is bullshit. Yeah. It's yeah. like oh, oh oh and you know like my dad could have had a heart attack. Yeah. I wouldn't have had a heart attack. Yeah. And then like you know I guess when you're a kid you just don't appreciate no. you don't understand that everything you got to work for stuff. Right. 
I think it, I think it was technically my dad's fault for not instilling that into me. Uh-huh. <laughs> you know, I yeah. had to learn that later on from like the military. You should have beat it into you, right? Yeah, I mean that's why you should hit your kids, everybody. Right. <laughs> beat your kids, twenty-year-old movie fans. But uh, yeah, um, yeah. Do you well, wanna... I wish I had more to say about this movie. I just uh, I don't know. It didn't really do anything for me. Yeah. Clearly successful, good. Did you, I mean the ending was kind of corny too? You know, the ending was kind of corny. Yeah, setting up the next film in you know Europe. Because then it's yeah, but that's what I don't like about Blade. He always seems to show up at the at the best time, like all cinematically, and he's like, "Motherfucker, I'm <laughs> here to kill your vampire ass," <laughs> you know. And yeah. then, so now he just knows to go to Russia, and he just happens to be, at, you know, in right. the exact moment where this woman's <laughs> getting attacked by a vampire. Yeah. Come on. That's what makes it's it It's like cheesy. James Bond. Yeah. 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 I love James Bond, though. So, yeah. I just, I don't know. Good stuff. There's a movie. What's the movie? Um, Do you know the, the actor Jean Dujardin? Holy fuck. How do you spell that? He, he was in the movie The Artist. But anyway, he, he's in a parody movie where he's like a James Bond, like spy type character, but he's like... You know, misogynistic, like just like a piece of shit, and that's that. I think that's funny, right? But uh, I can't imagine watching James Bond and being like, "Oh, cool." Yeah. Although I do like Sean Connery, but yeah. I think that's that was his appeal that he was kind of a yeah, kind of a dirtbag, right? Hot and cool, and he could get away. Like, I don't with... like. I didn't like Roger Moore. You didn't like Roger Moore. A part mm. of me just loves dad jokes. Okay. So you know, I watched those, and it was just fun. Yeah. You know, um, to see killing and stuff, and then there's like part of it, like even even like the shitty bonds, you know, like the ones that are kind of more boring. Yeah, it was just like kind of fun to watch a movie with my dad where we're both invested. So, yeah, yeah. right, yeah. Anyway, thanks yeah. for being on the podcast. Oh, thanks for having me. Um, you know, um, Blade was uh, Blade was uh, I give it I give it uh, two and a half stars out of four, but it's a good romp in the sack. Yeah, I would give it two. Two two stars? Yeah. Cool. You forget how hard it is to make a movie. Right. It's a lot of people right. coming together. Yeah, so. I was watching some of the behind the scenes, and I was like, oh, that's yeah. kind of, that looks like something that we would be able to do now. Yeah. And like, like, at any point, do, does like a crew member, when they're working on a movie, do they go, this fucking stinks? Oh. They must. 100% of the, most movies are bad. Yeah. You know, so yeah, yeah. you don't get to work on good movies. Right. Often. Right. So, yeah, 100%. I think uh, as well, like, if you are part of a crew for, like, a major director like uh, Martin Scorsese or, like, Paul Thomas Anderson and stuff like that, they have their guys, you know? Oh, they do. And then those guys have their guys. Okay. And then those guys have their guys. Okay. So it's like to to break in, it's like somebody's got Colin sick or, yeah. like, their schedule's got to line up and it's just like you just meet him and it's like what the f- okay i couldn't imagine how how to climb that ladder below yeah. the line ladder but anyway yeah it seems like a tough business to break into unlike stand-up which is very easy and <laughs> yeah. everybody should try everybody it. should do it you can all be on television <laughs> yeah yeah um yeah so um do you have anything you want to well our, our show matt yeah. and i do a show together yeah. called the sit down it's about uh organized crime and yeah. we're having some fun with that yeah it's a good time so check that out yeah we uh we just did an episode about the murder machine <laughs> yeah the DeMeo crew DeMeo crew yeah that's good and then uh, we got some exciting episodes coming up so we hope you check that out cool well thanks for being on again yeah um again, what are you pointing I, at I haven't me? done it yet oh well i mean oh yeah i guess Motherfucker. <laughs> Thanks for being on. Thanks for having me. Yeah. Um, and then uh, check out 20 Year Old Movie for uh, Twitter and Facebook and all that stuff if you want what's coming up. So uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. Bye. <laughs>